the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Uh, as today we gather to celebrate and uh, pray for strength for all marriages, we take a moment to call to mind our sin and we ask for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God. Creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman, that they might form the bond of marriage. Bless and strengthen the union of all your servants who are married, that they may show forth an ever more perfect image of the union of Christ with his church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel in Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in times past your fathers, down to Terah, father of Abraham and Nahor, dwelt beyond the river and served other gods. But I brought your father Abraham from the region beyond the river and led him through the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous and gave him Isaac. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau I assigned the mountain region of Seir in which to settle, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I went, I sent Moses and Aaron and smote Egypt with the prodigies, which I wrought in their mists. Afterwards, I led you out of Egypt, and when you reached the Red Sea, the Egyptians pursued your fathers to the Red Sea with chariots and horsemen. Because they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between your people and the Egyptians, upon whom he brought the sea so that it engulfed them. After you witnessed what I did to Egypt and dwelt a long time in the desert, I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I delivered them into your power. You took possession of their land, and I destroyed them. The two kings of the Amorites before you, then Barak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, prepared to war against Israel. He summoned Balaam, son of Weo, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. On the contrary, he had to bless you, and I saved you from him. Once you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, but I delivered them also into your power. And I sent the hornets ahead of you that drove them, the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Gagashites, Hivites, and Jebusites, out of your way. It was not your sword of, or your bow. I gave you a land that you had not titled, tilled, and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You have eaten of vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. The word of the Lord. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever? Who smote your great kings, for his mercy endures forever, and slew powerful kings, for his mercy endures forever? 
and made their land a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. The heritage of Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. And freed us from our foes, for his mercy endures forever. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? <clears throat> he said to them, Because of the hardness of their hearts. Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, is it better not to marry? He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that it is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we have the uh, their optional memorials of Saint Pontian and Saint Hippolytus, or Hippolytus. Uh, that's Hippolytus, though. Pontian became a bishop of Rome in 231 and was exiled to Sardinia, together with Hippolytus, by Emperor uh, Maximus in the year 235. There he resigned his office and died. Both were venerated by the Roman Church since the beginning of the fourth century as martyrs following maltreatment condoned by the emperor. Their remains have been returned to Rome from Sardinia, were buried in the cemetery near the uh, Tibertine Way. So today we celebrate uh, the wonderful gift of marriage. I have a little reflection on marriage, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about divorce. I thought, how can you talk about marriage without saying a few things about divorce in the sense that I think a lot of our people are, have a lot of misconceptions about divorce in terms of the reception of communion. So this is just a quick reflection. Uh, I think it's kind of nice. Um, in, in the mathematics of marriage, the sum is always one. Two souls come together, committed in love, becoming one heart, one flesh, and one life. In time, children may bless their union, but the additions still amount to one. Even when their sons and daughters depart, the total remains one. Some days one spouse gives more to the marriage than the other, while on other days more is demanded of the other spouse. But the result remains one. 50-50 does not figure into the amount of marriage, or into the mathematics of marriage. No matter what the additions, subtractions, multiplications, or even divisions that spouses may experience in their life together, the sum total is always one. One, that is the unity, the completeness, the totality of the love of God. The sacrifices and generosity wives and husbands, sisters and brothers make for the good of their family seeks the same result, one. 
May the joys and challenges of this day continue to add up to one for you and all of your families. So God bless all of those who are married and are a great witness to us of God's love. So one of the things that's very confusing um, is the whole idea of um, whether people can receive communion after they have been divorced. But when two Catholics are married in the church, or a Catholic and a non-Catholic are married in the Catholic church with the permission of the bishop, and those two get divorced, the divorcees can go to communion because the Catholic Church does not recognize divorce as a breaking up of that marriage. It's still, they're still sacramentally married. It's only when the person remarries outside the church, the Catholic party remarries outside the church, that they are not permitted to receive communion anymore. Now, some people do, and they have to make that decision on their own. So I've had so many people who were told by priests because they're divorced, you can't go to communion anymore. And I don't know if anybody, has anybody ever heard that or am I like living in a bubble somewhere? Has anybody heard that? If you're divorced, not remarried outside the church or anyone not remarried, have you guys heard that? So I guess I'm just saying this because first of all, we're recording this. So I'm gonna to try to cut out the part where I completely mucked it up. Um, but I just feel so badly for people because, um, you know, there's lots of other reasons why we shouldn't go to communion. We do mortal sins or whatever that may be. But for a couple, especially a couple or a person who's experiencing the breakup of a union, one of the things that they really need that's going to help them is to be able to go to communion. And people have stayed away for decades because they were told they couldn't go to communion because their marriage ended. So if you can get the word out to people, now they're married outside again, and then you run into all those difficulties, I understand all that. But if it's just simply divorce, they are still permitted to go to communion. So that's really what I wanted to say. But the biggest issue today is, you know, the wonderful gift that marriage is and the sign of the unity of Christ and his church. So. So let us now offer our prayers to the Lord, whose mercy endures forever. For all members of the church, may we be ever united in the mission of spreading the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For diplomats, ambassadors, and other government officials who strive to bring about peace among nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For families who face the challenges of illness, addiction, or division, let us pray to the Lord. For families who face the challenges of illness and struggle in other ways, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all of us gathered here, may we have the grace to be faithful to Jesus' command to love one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all married couples and the blessing of their union, and for those whose marriages have ended, for the blessing of a healing in their life, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our newly departed, and today we remember especially James McCulligan, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and calling on the intercession of our Blessed Mother for all of our intentions, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Good and gracious God, we give thanks to you for your endless mercy. We ask that you listen to the prayers we offer to you, for we lift them to you through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, who made the blood and water flow from the side of Christ as a sign of the mysteries of human rebirth, 
Be pleased, we pray, to receive the offerings we make in thanksgiving on behalf of all married people and endow their marriages with your many gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and the saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign. Oh, the Lamb of God. 
sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not glory to meet you today. You are under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Amen.